Well, good evening, my friends, and welcome to another online Bible study here at Bethlehem Baptist Church. I'm in the auditorium tonight and uh, wrapping up this series we have been doing for the last year. 39 keys to 39 books unlocking the Old Testament. This has been a journey for me. Uh, next Thursday night, we'll be finishing up this series, do a little bit of reorganization as it concerns our online Bible studies. And this has been a great journey for me. I've uh, always have wanted to do this project. I've done all the New Testament last year, and we've done all the Old Testament this year with this week and next week. We're in Zechariah tonight. And uh, so if you got your Bibles, turn to the book of Zechariah, uh, the next to last book in the Old Testament and the key verse of the book of Zechariah. And I love this book. I love the Messianic prophecies in this book. And there's so many parallels of this book as it concerns the book of Revelation. Last week, we talked about Haggai and his ministry there to the, to the remnant of in Jerusalem. When they came back under Cyrus's uh, reign, it was 520 B.C., 536 B.C., 534 B.C. Cyrus had signed a decree. They got back. It's about 520 B.C. They've let, they started building the temple, and then for 14 years, the temple sat vacant. Uh, they began building it, but then they stopped to build their own houses. Haggai had a strong message for them. They repented. Uh, but along with Haggai came Zechariah. Zechariah had the same sort of ministry to those people. Zechariah's name is, means God remembers. This is the longest book of the minor prophets. We're in the minor prophets. He encourages the Jews to return to work on the temple by reminding them of the future importance of that building. Unlike Haggai, Haggai rebuked the Jews for their lack of concern to finish building the temple. Both men, one was older, one was younger, they ministered at the same time, two different messages, but both relevant for that time and that purpose for those people. Zechariah emphasized in his ministry that the temple must be built, for one day Messiah's glory would inhabit it. His prophecy is second to Isaiah, when it comes to messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. That tells me that everyone who's called to be a preacher, called to minister, all have different ministries, but one purpose to bring souls to Christ by their personality, by uh, the type of people they're ministering to, maybe the culture, maybe whatever it is. That tells me because you had Zechariah and Haggai ministering, prophesying to these people at the same time, one older, one younger, Different perspectives, different personalities, but both are relevant for that day and what they needed to do for the temple. The theme of the book of Zechariah, Israel will be blessed because God remembers the covenant he made with Abraham, their ancestors. The purpose of the book of Zechariah, to encourage the Jews to finish rebuilding the temple because it would be used by the Messiah when he came to bring salvation. The key thought in this book of the Bible is the preparation for Messiah. If I were to break this book up into sections, you have the first part, chapters 1 through 6, you have eight visions. Chapters 7 and 8, you have four messages. And chapters 9 through 14, you have two burdens. So let's look at the first part, eight visions. It begins in chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. There, and it dates it just like it dates Haggai. Uh, but it also talks about in verse 3. Thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me and I will return to you. There's a nationwide, a call for nationwide repentance there in the first six verses. Then in verse seven of chapter one begins the first vision. Zechariah has a vision of angelic messengers, angelic horsemen who represent God's sovereign activity among the nations to bring his people back to Jerusalem so they can rebuild the temple. The second vision is found in chapters one through uh, uh, verse 18 through 21. There's a vision of four horns and carpenters, symbolizing that four world powers, Assyria, Greece, Babylon, Rome, would dominate Israel. Each world power, however, would be destroyed in turn. There with Assyria, Babylon, Greece, and Rome. Chapter 2 is the third vision. There's a vision of a man with a measuring line, depicting God surveying the land for the Jews who would return to inhabit it. The virtually desolate city of Jerusalem of that day would become large and populous. That was the prophecy. 
The fourth vision is in chapter 3, a wonderful vision. A vision of Joshua, the high, the high priest of that time. He is clothed with filthy garments, being accused by Satan. And then Jesus clothes him in clean garments, illustrating that Israel would be forgiven and cleansed by the grace of God. Chapter 4. There's a vision of a candlestick and two olive trees symbolizing the renewed light of Israel among the nations. There's another prophecy of that in Revelation when the two witnesses. Chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, there's a vision of a flying scroll indicating that God's judgment would come upon the Jews because they broke his commandments. Chapter 5, verses 5 through 11, the vision of a woman in a bushel basket portraying the purging of the Jews' idolatry by their captivity in Babylon. And the eighth and final vision is the vision in chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, of four chariots and horses representing the judgment of God that would come upon the nations. Then it finishes in that first part in chapter 6, verses 9 through 15, of the high priest Joshua's crown. He anticipates the reign of Messiah, who will be both priest and king. That leads to the second part of this book of the Bible, and that's four messages in verse 7 and 8. Chapter 7, verses uh, 1 through 7, and it's all, it's all broken up by dating. Let me go back here in the book of Zechariah to make sure I'm, I've got this right. Yes, it is all, all four messages are broken apart by dating. Chapter 7, verses 1 through 7, Zechariah emphasizes that God delights in obedience rather than ritualistic fasting. Chapter 7, verses 8 through 14, Zechariah reminds the people that the judgment of God came on them and they were scattered among the nations because they did not listen to the prophets who ministered before the exile. Chapter 8, verses 1 through 19, Zechariah predicts the restoration of the people of Israel from all over the world. Chapter 8, verses 20 through 23, people from all nations will be united in seeking the Lord. So four messages there from Zechariah and his prophecy. Then chapters 9 through 14, there are two burdens. The first burden being from chapter 9 through 11. The second burden from chapter 12, verse 14, to chapter 12 to chapter 14. And it begins with the burden of the word of the Lord. And that's how you break that apart. But this first burden, chapter 9, verses 1 through 8, Zechariah predicts God's judgment upon the neighboring nations. Chapter 9, verses 9 through 17, Zechariah predicts the coming of the Messiah. Actually, in verse 9 of chapter 9, he predicts Messiah would ride into Jerusalem on a colt, which was fulfilled when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday in Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. In chapter 9, verse 13, he prophesies Greece would rise to prominence. 200 years later, did Greece do that under the reign of Alexander the Great? Chapter 10, Zechariah declares God would bring back his people and take care of them. Chapter 11, Zechariah describes the full of shepherds who will lead the Jews to reject the true shepherd. Chapter 11, verse 12, there is a great prophecy. He predicts that Messiah would be sold for 30 pieces of silver. It was fulfilled in Matthew 26, 15, when Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Then the second burden from chapter 12 to chapter 14 we see in chapter 12, Zechariah predicts that Jerusalem would be the center of a great war and God would deliver his people. Chapter 13, Zechariah depicts the cleansing of Jerusalem and the smiting of God's uh, shepherd. Actually, in chapter 12, verse 10, and in chapter 13, verse 7, he predicts that Messiah would be pierced and smitten. And that was fulfilled, my friend, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sin and yours. Chapter 14, Zechariah anticipates a worldwide battle in which the Lord will fight against the nations and reign over all the earth from Jerusalem. And we see that in chapter 12 and chapter 14 where Jerusalem's the center of a great war. Armageddon, Revelation 16, talks about that. Chapter 4, verse 4, Messiah will return to earth and stand on the Mount of Olives when Jesus ascended to heaven. From the Mount of Olives, the angels announced that Jesus would return in like manner, chapter, Acts chapter 1. Also, we see in chapter 14, the Messiah will be the judge of all the nations and king over all the earth. And his dominion shall be from sea to sea. And it ends with a, a great triumph of the Messiah. Zechariah gives divine revelation concerning three basic chronological points. 
First of all, his own time. He is encouraging the people to rebuild the temple. He also rebukes the people for fasting because they felt sorry for themselves rather than out of concern for spiritual things. And he encourages them to exhibit kindness and justice. He also gives divine revelation on the first coming of Christ. He accurately predicts aspects of the earthly life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And we see where he blends together regarding uh, the first and second coming of Christ, uh, chapter 9, uh, verses 9 uh, through 10. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on the donkey, the colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. He combines there in that prophecy the first and second coming because the prophets in that time saw mountaintops of prophecy. And as time went on, the details were filled in as God will fulfill those prophecies. Several similarities of the book of Revelation there in Zechariah because he also predicts the messianic kingdom on earth. King of all the earth, dominion from sea to sea. So with that in mind, let me give you some life principles from Zechariah. There's some verses in this book of the Bible that I have personally embraced in my life and, and have lived my life on the truths that is found in Zechariah's prophecy. So let me give you a few of them, and then I'll get you the key verse, and we'll be done for tonight. First of all, in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 3, when he calls the people to repentance... I've already read this tonight, but let me read this again. In chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. That tells me, just like James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw near unto you. God draws near to those who draw near to him. There's another thing I see. Chapter 4 and verse 10, I love this passage of Scripture as well. And here's the principle. Don't be discouraged because your service to God may not be as outwardly impressive as somebody else's. Notice this. Chapter 4, verse 10, for who has despised the day of small things? Note that question. Who has despised the day of small things? God does not measure you against anybody else. He measures you against what he has given you the potential to become and the potential to do. Let me say that again. He does not measure you against anyone else like many of us do. We try to measure ourselves and compare ourselves to other people, other ministries, etc. God does not do that. He measures you against what he's given you the potential to become and the potential to do. He's measured our ministry here at Bethlehem against what he has given us and the potential to become and the potential to do. Those who had seen Solomon's temple were discouraged because the rebuilt temple would obviously not look like Solomon's temple. And Zechariah declares, who has despised the day of small things? Every great ministry for the Lord has begun as a small thing. Don't despise the day of small things. The small things, whether it's in your marriage, in relationships, in a church, in a ministry. The, the day of small things is when God's doing all the working, all the preparation. Don't despise the day of small things. Don't have that temptation to, to compare. Don't be discouraged. God's given us a ministry. God's given us a calling. And, and he gives us the potential to fulfill that calling. And that's how he measures us. Not comparing everybody else. Here's a third principle. Chapter 4, verse 6. Relying on the power of the Holy Spirit is essential for spiritual victory and progress. Notice. Chapter 4, verse 6 says, Not by might nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. That is essential for victory and progress spiritually as a church and individual life. We can do everything right as a church and a ministry, but if we don't have the Holy Spirit power of God, then we're nothing. We must rely and depend and pray for the Holy Spirit's power in our life. Here's a fourth principle in this book of the Bible. 
Chapter 7 and chapter 8, God's future blessings are contingent to a degree upon our present obedience. Zechariah in those messages emphasizes that if the people would humble themselves before God, they would have a glorious future. You cannot live in deliberate disobedience to God and expect him to bless you. Here's another principle. The Bible is completely trustworthy. Because Zechariah tells me of prophecies that were fulfilled when Jesus came to this earth the first time. Those fulfillments give me and should give us as believers complete confidence that every prophecy regarding the future and the second coming of Christ will be fulfilled. Another principle I see is absolutely foolish to try to fight against God. The nations of the earth in chapter 14 of Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. Verse 3, the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle. The nations of the earth will join forces against God, but his enemies will dissolve. We know that in Revelation, it's future prophecy, the battle of Armageddon. And I see also in chapter 14 and verse 9, and in chapter 9 and verse 10, that Jesus Christ will rule the entire world. Chapter 9 and verse 10, his dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Zechariah portrays the humble Messiah becoming a mighty ruler who will be king over all the earth, whose dominion will be from sea even to sea. That leads me to the key verse of all the book. Chapter 14 and verse 9, the key verse of Zechariah. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day it shall be the Lord is one and his name one. What a day that will be, my friend. We look forward in anticipation to that day when he's king over all the earth, king of kings, lord of lords, when he rules and reigns from Jerusalem. However, the question is, Zechariah already talked about the first coming of Christ and he has come and it's been fulfilled. Matthew gives us that fulfillment. But does he rule and reign in your heart? Do you know him as your personal savior? The Bible tells us, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you accepted him? Have you seen yourself as a sinner in light of God's holiness? And have you seen Christ as that substitutionary sacrifice? His blood, are you trusted in his blood to cover your sins? Have you done that, friend? The focus throughout the scriptures is Jesus Christ. The Old Testament talks about him. The New Testament fulfilled of him who came to save us. And also the focus is the land of Israel, the people of, uh, the, people of the, the Jewish people, the city of Jerusalem, the temple, all part of God's covenant with Abraham and all will be fulfilled someday wrapped up. So that's all I have really for the book of Zechariah. And I just want to share those thoughts with you to dig deeper into this great book of the Bible. I'm going to finish up now. Hope and trust everyone has a great, happy new year. Looking forward to a great service on Sunday morning. Hey, we're going to begin our service Sunday morning doing a, a highlight video for all the ministry that God's helped us to do this year at Bethlehem Baptist and get into a great service and some things, to, a good message to start off the new year. So anyway, I'll see you on the other side. It's 2021 tonight. I'll see you on Sunday in 2022. Hope and trust you have a good evening. God bless you. Have a good night.